What is up, my drummers? Hope you're doing well. Good to be back with you on the next lesson. And in this one, guys, I want to show you how to take a simple concept on the drums, something like a simple rudiment that you may have already played for a long time, and I want to show you how to transform it into something that really comes alive on the kit. So we're going to take this and transform it into this. So it's time to gird up your loins because we're going to be burning through this drum lesson in just a few steps. And if you don't know what that means, that means put your big boy pants on and strap them down. Hey, one quick thing before we jump into the lesson. Remember, you get five free practice loops when you sign up at fisherdrumming.com with your email. Totally free. My gift to you. Also, there is a drumming class. It's an online training that you stream right from your phone or your computer. And it is a super cool class. It's goes through a lot of different topics and drumming, super essential things that every drummer needs to learn. And that is a free training you can get in the link down in the description, so check that out. All right, guys, so let's start breaking this thing down. Now, the very first step is learning the rudiment, and that is a single flammed mill. Now, if you don't know that rudiment, no big deal. It's pretty easy to learn. It's a double stroke, and the first note is flammed, followed by two single strokes. So that looks like this, nice and slow. Right, right, left, right, First note, flammed. And we want to accent that first note. So, leading with the left, it's the same thing. Starting with the left hand. So pretty straightforward. Now you want to be able to alternate that back and forth. So nice and slow, again. A little faster. All right, guys, so now we're going to start transforming this rudiment. And the first way we're going to do that is we're going to flatten the flam. So instead of playing a nice open flam like this, right, we're going to be playing a closed flam. And what that means is you're just playing two notes at the same time. You're playing those right and lefts as a unison note. No more gap, no more flam, just a closed flam. All right, so completely changes the sound and doesn't really sound good when you're playing it on one voice on the snare. But when you start to change the voices, so now your right hand's playing on a different drum, it's gonna make a lot more sense. So hang with me, because you'll see how we orchestrate this. And the other thing we're gonna do is instead of alternating right, left, going back and forth between these single flammed mills, we're gonna just be focusing on that left one. We're playing the double on our left hand. So we have left, left, right, left, and that first note is also with our right hand. So now that you're just focusing on repeating the left side, left, left, right, left, 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 right, left, that pattern, your right hand is going to be playing consistent eighth notes. Okay, so it looks like this. Now, if you notice, so far we have a pattern, but it's still not super useful on the kit yet, and it's hard to play that fast. So what we're going to do to make it more useful and sound better and uh, actually have something to work around the kit is we're going to displace the last note played with our left hand with a kick. So that looks like this. All right, so the first way I just want you to start to get comfortable with this, playing it this way, is we're going to play the first note, that first uh, unison note. Instead of playing it both on the snare, I want you to just move your right hand up to a tom and work your right hand down the toms and back up, okay? Just like a little exercise getting you used to this, okay? So now we have a pattern that we can really work with around the kit and really have some fun with it. So let's just work on playing that around the kit. No specific orchestration yet. The only thing you should just try doing right now is just moving that first right hand around the toms just to get comfortable and used to this new pattern.
All right, so a lot more fun to play. But what about our left hand? Can we get some more action with our left hand? One of the things you can do is you have a quick left. Remember that double. But you don't always have to keep your left hand on the snare. Try playing the first note of the double on a tom and the second note of a double on the snare. So you're sweeping that note. And this is a little tricky to get down at first, but you want to just basically hold your stick nice and loose and use your arm to carry that note through, to carry that double through from the tom to the snare. Okay, so that's really fun. Now you can do that orchestration where you're starting to move your left hand and you can do your right hand. So now you can do both and kind of create some new ideas with that. Okay, so you can see this starts to get really fun. Now, don't forget your hi-hat. All right, give it a nice little bark when you hit that hi-hat. All right, so now this becomes a really fun chop that you can use all different ways around the kit. All right, guys, so you understand the main idea here. You've got the chop down, but now let's actually apply it to the kit and really bring it to life. And the way we got to do that is we got to put it into a subdivision. So let's count 16th notes. And now this pattern that we've been learning is a four note grouping, right? Now, if we're going to put it into a 16th note measure, you could play that pattern four times and there you go. Fills up the measure nicely and it sounds great. But I want to show you one more thing that's going to even transform it more and make it even more fun and more musical. Okay, and that's breaking up that pattern. So right now we have four, 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 four. I want to play four, four, two, four, two. And that sounds weird, but it'll make more sense as I show you. Now it's actually really simple to just make this final change. And I'm going to call it stuttering the pattern. Because right now we have that four note grouping playing over and over, and I want to interrupt it after we play it two times. So we're going to play it two times, and then all we're going to do is we're going to play a unison note and a kick, and you can just play that left hand on the tom again. Then we're going to play the full pattern again, another four notes, and then we're going to finish off the measure by just playing two notes on the snare. And that would fill up the whole 16th note measure. So Remember, two times pattern, then a quick unison note kick by itself, again the pattern, and then two notes on the snare. So that looks like this, really slow. Wow, now we have something totally new to work with, right? I'm just showing you this really simple orchestration so that you can get the idea. All I'm doing is I'm just putting my left hand on this rack tom. But now that you have this new pattern to play, you can start orchestrating that differently around the kit. So let me show you one idea. Here we go. Okay, now that feels really good. So I'm just going left hand on the rack, left hand on the second rack, then my right hand this time on the floor, the stuttering part, that, that, and then I'm starting the pattern over again with my right hand on the floor. So. First pattern, second pattern, stutter, final pattern. And then there's those two notes finishing it off on the snare. Now remember, we can also bring in our hi-hat. How about we move it to the hi-hat and the floor back and forth? All right, guys, so you've seen a few orchestrations. We don't really need to put it in a groove context for you to get the idea. I'm just going to have a little fun and see if I can come up with something. I'm just going to flow around the kit and try to use it naturally and let it naturally come out and do its thing. So that's the ultimate goal of this, right? It's a chop that you can throw in there. You just want it to kind of show up when you want to bust something out and do a little fancy little fill. 
it's fun for that. And so I'm gonna try to do something like that here, okay? All right, guys, so as you can see, I'm just having fun with this. I'm chopping out. I hope that you see how we can take something simple like a, a standard rudiment and transform it into something that we can really have fun with on the kit. Guys, remember, if you want more lessons like this, you can visit fisherdrumming.com. We have an all-access membership for a super low one-time payment, or you can get a monthly pass. So check that out. So I'll see you guys on the next lesson here. Stay tuned in the next two or three weeks. We'll be coming out with the next one. See you. Practice. Have fun. Thank you